Hey guys, Lauren Lake here. All right, so I know you've been waiting. So we're finally here in my finished kitchen. So today's the day we're gonna do our kitchen tour so you can see everything I did to this kitchen and also get to see what it looked like before. So come on in, it's not a huge kitchen. Again, this is a mid-century modern home. I found it reminded me of the house I grew up in. I loved it, I had to have it. And I just wanted to restore the beauty in some parts and then modernize and make it more contemporary in others. So the old kitchen wasn't gonna cut it. So we decided to just tear everything out and do a brand new fresh kitchen. So come on in. Since these mid-century modern homes are not that large, um, we had to really think about how to design this. And I said to myself, the first thing I gotta do is open it up. So I literally opened up this wall here, I blew this wall out, I blew this out, and then this whole wall here is out so that I have an open space. In the old kitchen, this area used to be the breakfast nook and then this was the kitchen. To save money, I really did not change up any of the placement of the appliances. The refrigerator's in the same place the refrigerator used to be, sinks in the same place, and the oven, now this full range, is in place of where an electric cooktop was, but I switched everything out to gas. So come along, I decided to do just white simple white. You know why? Because I blew out everything else. It's open to the house. And so therefore, if I turned it a different color, that was just going to get too busy. And I figured that in these mid-mod homes, the rooms are so small and compartmentalized. If I did white, it would look larger than it really is. So we did a white glossy cabinet, um, wood cabinet. I was so happy to find an affordable white glossy wood cabinet. I wanted to go a little bit level up from an Ikea, although Ikea makes some amazing kitchens, they do. But look, I've got a nine year old who's gonna bang and pull and it's very, very hot out here. So I didn't want any of the, the that fake um, MDF board to buckle or anything. So this is a glossy wood cabinet. Um, on my last update, we talked about the knobs. On the cabinets, I ended up going with the simple loose sight knob on the lower interior cabinets only. So I didn't put them on the uppers as you can see, just the lowers. And I think it's such a great thing because when you walk in the front door, you can see straight through to the kitchen, but you can't see the knobs. So when you come around the room, it's like bonus, it's, it's, it's like a little sparkle bonus and it really lights up the space. So when I thought about how to do the appliances, I decided to go for a suite of Viking appliances because look, you don't have to have matching appliances in your space. I actually love spaces sometimes where they're mismatched and um, you know, they're from different um, uh, uh, product lines. But here, it's so small, it was simple for me to just streamline it. So I did a simple Viking series. It looks very um, industrial, which I like. Um, and it had a refrigerator that was functional, large enough to basically house all the food that I need to, mostly fruits and vegetables, because I'm trying to be healthy, but you know what I mean. Trying to get everything in. You want space, but you want it to still look nice. So. This was kind of my best um, bet. And then I just went with the microwave and I went with the range here. If you come around here, I had to put a zebra in because y'all know I love an animal print. You know I love a zebra. And uh, 
you know, as you can see, animal prints and me just go together. Um, what else did I do in here? Ah, this focal point here, this dramatic hood, this was a big deal to me because I knocked out all the walls. So when you walk into the house, the first thing you see is this hood sitting over this range. And that was important because you needed a focal point in this space. There wasn't going to be a lot of interesting architectural details because I basically just streamlined and made it very minimal. So I wanted something dramatic. And then I brought in the glass uh, feature, the hood with the glass feature because of the loose site and several of the other glass elements that I have in here that I think it connected well with. Now, one of the things that was a big deal to me was what to do with this washer and dryer. In the original house, this whole area was a pantry and it was all enclosed. All of this was enclosed. This was a wall. And this was a pantry, and then you walked into the laundry room before you went to the garage. I knocked everything out, and I gave up my big pantry space. Kind of regretted on some days, but working through it. But what I had to decide was, should I move the washer and dryer? Now, the original washer and dryer was side by side. I mean, this house was built in 1969. In the 70s, they didn't have stackables. So I thought about moving the washer and dryer and the whole laundry room to one of the bedrooms in the walk-in closet area and recreating it until the contractor gave me the price of $8,000. So then I thought to myself, what can we do to make this cute? So I know about, of course, stackables. And I thought to myself, well, what if I brought in a white stackable that has similar stainless steel, you know, chrome-ish accents and stacked them up in the corner and just put them there. Well, I did it and I liked it. Then the issue was, should I make a wall? Should I make a door? Well, if I made a door, if I opened it, then it would cut off coming in from the garage. And I also just really like the visual of them sticking out. I don't know why it appealed to me, but it felt very industrial. It just felt super modern. And I just thought to myself, I'm gonna make a fashion choice that I love. And I'm gonna leave the washer and dryer exposed in the kitchen. Come to find out later on, I start looking through and I saw that a lot of the apartments in New York, a lot of the smaller apartments in Europe are doing this, putting the washer and dryer in the kitchen area and not necessarily enclosing with a door all the time. So who knew, but I am still so satisfied with it. Every time I come in here, I'm like, I'm so glad I made this choice and saved $8,000. So to make it look finished, we just bought some extra cabinet covering here and covered this wall. And then we did cabinetry up top where I can do all of my laundry stuff. Yes, I have to get on a stool. Yes, I am vertically challenged, but I can just keep all my laundry stuff and everything up there and it keeps everything clean. So if you guys remember my HGTV show, you know that in the final scene, when we reveal the kitchen, for me, one of the best parts and one of the things I love to do most was counterscape. I love to bring in the big, you know, KitchenAid mixer, all of the beautiful flowers. I love to bring in all of these things. But for some reason in this particular space, I wanted a minimalist feel. I didn't want anything on the cabinets. I can't tell you how many times I have put flowers right there. And then when I come in, I move them because I just don't want them there. It feels clean, it feels fresh, and something about not breaking up the space and letting it flow really helps me. So if you can see, I really have very few things on my counter. I have just a few canisters with chia seeds, flax seeds, this is a little quinoa and some brown rice pasta. Those are things that I use a lot in the kitchen every day making smoothies. CJ loves pasta. So I just keep those there and it kind of makes it feel a little bit lived in. And I went with a simple white quartz countertop to keep everything clean and fresh. And for the backsplash, I just went with a simple white high gloss ceramic wavy tile it's so fun, contemporary, adds a little depth and visual interest to the space. Then we did invisible shelves here. I love the invisible shelves because we don't see any of the hardware connecting it. And I literally put two little fake plants from Ikea, I think they were like $4, 
I bought them even before the kitchen was done because I thought they were cute. And then when I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna put them in this kitchen and not have to worry about watering them and not have to worry about them dying. And they've been here ever since and I didn't move them. And then I just went, these plates, these plates are from the dollar store. And I went in there, I got one, two, three, four, five. Oh, look, I got four of each. So I got 16 uh, things and then I got this, and I got one, two, three, four, yeah. I got $16 worth of plates, cups, saucers, and bowls, and I stacked them here. And I really don't use them. I don't let CJ touch them and move them because they're just gonna get messed up. But I think it's a nice, clean feel. It makes it, you know, kind of feel homey, uh, but it's decoration at the same time, which I love a two for one, all right, don't you? So what else have I shown you? Oh, so I did go for a little drama um, with a dramatic uh, sink. Uh, hardware. So this was this was easy to do. I felt like if you're going to do commercial appliances, then get a commercial looking uh, faucet to go with the kitchen and just did a simple soap pump. And I did invest in a water filter because I'm trying to do better on my water. And, you know, it's good for cooking and everything else. But I kept it simple and then brought in this dramatic stainless steel farmhouse sink, which was so awesome, but I'll tell you, it was one of those things that really went wrong, then went right. Because the farmhouse sink I really wanted was just kind of the straight, it looks very minimalist, very European. It doesn't have this angle in it here. I didn't order this sink, but when the sink came, it was this one. And it was one of those moments where I was out of town, actually at that time, was I shooting paternity court Oh, was me and CJ in Europe. I don't know, I wasn't here. And I remember Brooke, my assistant, was coming in and out and helping um, manage the contractors for me. And when she called me, she was like, oh, I love your sink. And I was like, oh, it's it, the sink is in. And when she sent me the picture, it was like, that ain't the sink. <laughs> but the good thing is I loved it. And I was like, do you love it? And she was like, I love it. So when I came home and saw it in person, it was like one of those things where it was like, a problem that turned out to be perfection because I didn't have to return it because I loved it. And I think this kind of angular feature here matches some of the other very strong right angles that I bought into the space. So you guys know I love the letter L, right? So when I designed this kitchen, I had to blow out this whole area here. There were cabinets all up top. This was a bar, this was a cooktop. Don't look at my nails because they ain't done today. I'm out here doing crafts with my son. Um, so I developed this thought of how can I create an eat-in kitchen area without having a separate table because I just didn't want all of that furniture. So I created this, and as you can see, it's the letter L if you were standing this way. Like if I'm cooking, this is a letter L, and then this is a backwards letter L. And I created this out of right angles and designed this and basically had the countertops cut to cover this. And I added, under here is just more cabinetry. I brought in more cabinetry. So all my entertaining like wine glasses, like if you come over here, I just have things that I don't use all the time down here, like you can see wine glasses, things that I use when I entertain. Um, so these are cabinets here that are functional, but I don't have to get in them every day. Then I'm out at the lamp store looking for lamps, and lo and behold, they got a sale in the back room, so you know I had to go. So I get back there and I see these. And so I see these two stools sitting and I say to the woman, I said, there's no price on these because you tell me how much these are. And she's like, oh, I don't see a price either. Look underneath the thing. The thing says $25, y'all. $25. I'm like, is this a mistake? But I wasn't going to ask. I said, these are $25? She says, yes. And I was like, well, let me not question it over and over again. I took them straight onto the counter and bought them. So I got these two stools for $25 each and pulled them right up here. This was not the stool that I had in my mind. I was thinking of more of an industrial type stool, but guess what, for $25, this stool looks perfect for me. And they are comfortable, we can raise them up and down, it's perfect so we can adjust it for CJ. And it's a really nice little set. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice little set. So, you know, I wish I had more to show you. Oh, I can show you this. This was a really great part that I blew out here. 
This used to be a wall in the pantry area, but I cut it out so I could kind of make an island for parties serving like a buffet. So if I'm serving, I usually set this up as my bar or nibble area so that you could really get it from either side of the room. And then I have some stools in the garage that I can bring in and I can sit three more stools here if I wanna have a party and then people can enjoy the view that way. So that's another thing that I did to kind of multifunction. You know, all this limitless living that I do, I try to apply it to my design style too. I want everything to have more than one purpose or I want to be able to do more than one thing with a certain item or a certain feature. Um, that's important to me because then we get more bang for our buck. So this was kind of my buffet slash um, eating area with a view and it also has cabinetry that really functions. So I can put things in here too, I keep all my What's in here? My plastic bags and all of my plastic wear in there. So that's pretty much the kitchen, guys. Um, we do a lot of entertaining, a lot of cooking in here. I've been very, very pleased with it. It's small, but we can get the job done. And because I blew out all of these walls, it can hold a number of people. Because you know, no matter how much you plan for people, honey, I can set chips and dip over there, I can set shrimp over there. Somehow when you're entertaining, people come straight to your kitchen. And so now at least they have a place to hang out, I can cook, we entertain, and that's really what it's all about. The kitchen is the heart of the home and it felt good to get back in and design kitchens. I, I, I was like, okay, I'm ready to have another design show too. I love designing kitchens. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it and we're gonna have hopefully um, some more things to show you in the house as I start finishing up and wrapping up all of my construction. So this is the kitchen tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to Lauren Lake Limitless Live for more incredible content. We're gonna be designing homes and designing lives. So stay tuned for all of the inspiration, motivation and empowerment. And also click the like button and comment because I want to hear what you think. All right, talk to you guys soon, bye-bye.